Hi there. Welcome to Beginner C Sharp Programming using WinForms. My name is Charlie Shirelli. I've been a programming teacher for over 35 years. Never programmed before? Never used C Sharp before? Then you've come to the right place. This video series will give you a perfect introduction to the basics of C Sharp programming and how it can be applied to solve some simple practical applications. Let's get rolling. And first things first, we need two pieces of software. Both are free and easily available. The first one we're going to take a look at is the development environment we're going to use to code C Sharp. Now I've pointed our uh, screen to the Visual Studio site on Microsoft and the one that I'm going to use to demonstrate all my examples is called Visual Studio Express and if you slide down here at the bottom this is the one that I'm going to demonstrate with and it's called Express 2015 for Windows Desktop. Now to tell you the truth I would recommend that you guys download the community version which just came out uh, this week as I'm recording and it's called uh, Community 2017. It's going to look exactly like mine but the extra feature in that one is that it also has some hooks into Unity which I know you guys as game developers are going to take advantage of later. Now I don't teach Unity as part of this course I just teach you the C Sharp component but I would recommend that you download this. So let's take a look at what you do. So we're just going to press on it. I would say no to this for now. And this pops up. Now on your hard drive, make a folder, call it the Game Institute or whatever you want, and then save this Visual Studio uh, to that particular folder. Now once you save it to that folder, double click on it. It's going to probably take 15-20 minutes to install, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less depending on how fast your internet connection is and uh, the speed of your computer. But once that's installed, we're ready to take a look at the next step. Alright, so let's make sure now that the installation went successfully. Now I'm demonstrating using Windows 10. You might have uh, XP or Vista or whatever or Windows 7 or 8, but it should uh, be quite similar to what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to slide down. It's usually in uh, visual. Look for V. Look for the V. Yeah, there it is. So I've got on my system the Express, which I'll show you in a second, and I've got um, the community version 215, okay? And they're going to look exactly the same, but just, just for the sake of testing things out, let me just show you what this looks like. I'm going to press the one that I'm going to demonstrate with and this is the uh, Express version okay so it should look something like that when you start it up now initially on my machine it should go a little bit faster than yours it's gonna go through a bunch of initializations uh, which may take a little bit longer than what you see mine doing right now but that is your typical Visual Studio Express screen and uh, I mean, what is going to happen? What are we going to do in this screen? Well, eventually in future lessons, you're going to go to File, New Project, and we're going to create Windows Form applications. There's different types of things that you can create, console apps, uh, WPF applications. Usually well, we're going to press this one right here, and then we're going to press OK, and it's going to create a screen which has on the left hand side certain controls that we can add to a C Sharp program and on the right hand side some properties that we can set uh, related to those controls. Okay, and again, this is part of the setup that you'll see as you create your first uh, C Sharp uh, software application. So after a couple of seconds of initialization, here is your typical uh, development environment called Visual Studio Express. Over here on the left hand side, we have controls that you'll see me use in some future lessons, some properties, and this is sort of like what we call the form, replace all our controls, our graphics, or whatever, what the user is going to see, okay? So if when you pressed uh, Visual Studio Express or the community version and it popped up, that means you have the software working. Now just to emphasize the point about what makes community so special is, let me start up community for a second, just so you, you see that it's kind of cool for game developers. So this is the community version, all right? And it's the 2015, but 2017 is gonna look uh, very similar. And this is what we call the community version. And you're gonna go, well, it looks like the one you just did a couple of uh, minutes ago, and you're right. Okay, it's the same look and feel, and that's why, don't worry, if you load in the community version, and I'm comparing them in, uh, the Express version. Now, here's what makes this a little bit more powerful. It's a bigger program, obviously, too. Whoa, 
lots more different things here. I only saw two or three in the one I just showed you. This one here, you can make programs specifically for Windows 8. You can make iOS apps. Um, let's slide down. What's this here? Game. And then you can install Unity. So you can install Unity and special tools specific for uh, games. Okay, so this is what makes the community a little bit different and probably better than the Express version. But again, the reason I'm using the Express version is it's plain and simple for me, and we're just trying to learn C Sharp. Okay, but it's kind of neat to have that as an extra little feature. And all of this is free for Microsoft, nothing to be paid. There are professional versions of Visual Studio also, but for the most part, you don't need the, the professional version. This is more than what we uh, need. Now, the second piece of software you require as part of this course is a compression program. And the reason you need a compression program is I'm going to give you tons and tons of demos. And uh, obviously, we're going to work through examples together, but sometimes you may not get them to work and you're going to get frustrated. And you're going to say, I wish I could see this program actually run. So I give you every single example I'm going to cover in this course. But the thing is, there's so many of them. What I do is I compress them. I zip them up. Sometimes you might hear that word. Uh, so you need a program that unzips them. And I now direct you to this particular one that I like that's totally free. It's called 7-Zip. And depending on whether you've got a 32-bit computer or a 64-bit, uh, pick the right one. Uh, click on download, obviously. And again, go to your folder where you're going to put all your stuff. Uh, save it and execute it. And then I'll show you how to make it work. Okay, so you've downloaded 7-Zip and installed it. So what do you do with it now? Well, as I've mentioned before, this course is going to have lots of demos that you can download. So after each module, you will see a link or some sort of file that I want you to download and put on your computer. And let's pretend for uh, sake of example that I have in uh, module one a, a file that's compressed that I want you to download. You download it and save it in a, uh, a folder of your choice. And there it is. Now you go, well, what am I going to do with it now? Well, now that you've installed 7-Zip, what you can do is you can right-click on that file. And I've got WinRAR installed on my machine, but like I said, I want you guys to use 7-Zip. And then you go to the one that says Extract To, click it, give it a couple of seconds, and there you have now a folder that came out of this. Now let's take a look at what's in this folder. Inside that folder are two other folders. So you see the advantage of compression. It allows me to, in one little file, have multiple files. And tell you the truth, inside of here is all kinds of other stuff. Okay, so that is the idea of compression and uh, unzipping or uh, decompressing. Okay, to, to finish up our first little introduction to uh, what you need to get started in the C-sharp programming uh, course, what I want to do is just give you a little glimpse on what a simple little C-sharp program looks like, just for fun. So we just recently uh, unzipped uh, my demos and I have two folders here and each one represents a, a sample program. Why don't we actually click on the one that says sample and you see all these files. Now what do you do now? Which one actually is the one that's the main one that will kickstart the entire uh, program? Well usually you look for something that has the word .sln on it or project but I usually like to pick this one right here and I'm going to double click on it. Now, if your software installed correctly, this should start up, as it's doing with mine, should start up the Visual Studio Express development system. And in a second, you will see, well, kind of see a program. Now, you're going, well, you just loaded it. Where is it? Well, what you usually do over here on the right-hand side is you look for the word that has the form on it. And I'm going to double-click on it for a second. And in a few seconds, what you're going to see on the left-hand side is a program. And this program is made up of a number of different controls, things that we are going to learn as part of this course. And what's happened is I've dragged and dropped controls over here. Now, how do you get this program to work? Well, you press this little button here called Start. And in a few seconds, the program will compile the code, make it into special machine code that will execute. And you'll see in the middle of the screen in a second, uh, a program running and there it is this is a c-sharp program running and we'll try out a few things okay so these are all happening this is a little slider bar this changes the screen color this beeps this does a little bit of animation okay this is a typical c-sharp program and just to give you a little bit of inside 
uh, scoop, this is the code that we're going to learn. This code right here, which right now looks like Greek or something strange to you, is C-sharp code that we're going to learn as part of this course. Now, if you didn't get this program to run this way, there is another way to make it run. Let me get out of this for a second. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start up uh, Visual Studio in its pure form, okay? And I'll do it another way, okay? So if you can't get your program to run by double-clicking on it, try it this way. You go to File, Open Project, and then you go somewhere on your hard drive. Now, I know uh, where my stuff is, right? I'm in the lectures demo, and I'm going to go inside of here. Now, when you do it this way, all the other files are hidden from you. It only shows you the two files that you could click on to load your program. So as I showed you in the last one, I'll click on this. So this is the second way to get my demos to load in. So if it doesn't work one way, you can try it this way. And again, there is the form. You'll see it pop up in a second. This is the code you were looking at, obviously. Here is our form, and then you can press run again to make it run. But that is sort of like what we're going to be doing in this course, okay? We're going to be working with a screen interface. We're going to be dragging controls there. We're going to be going into the underground, so to speak, the code world, and typing in special codes that will enable us to access and control our screen in terms of graphics, sound effects, or whatever we want to learn. Okay, so that's our brief introduction, and now we get our hands dirty and start doing real computer programming in C Sharp. Let's start off and uh, load up uh, Visual Studio. All right, and uh, the first thing we're going to do, and we're trying to get into a routine of how we create programs all the time. We're going to get a, a particular a routine down. So first of all, we'll go to File, New Project. All right, and there's several types of C sharp programs that you can write. We're going to focus in on Windows form applications. Okay, there's other sites on Udemy that teach C sharp, and they spend a lot of time doing console apps. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go straight to the fun stuff, uh, the cute little things that you can see on screen because we're very visual. We're going to do a lot of user interface applications. So we're going to pick that one 99% of the time. Okay, so we're just going to gently click on it once first, and now I want you to focus on here. I'm going to rub out this, and what we're going to do is we're going to call this our first app. That's what we're going to call our application, and that will be the directory name, and inside of there, there will be a bunch of other little files, and the program file that will get everything going is also going to be called first app. That's kind of like, you could change that if you want, but I usually match the folder name to the app uh, solution name. Okay, I always try to get those to match. Next thing is really, really important. Make sure the computer is pointing to the exact folder where you want to save all your stuff. Okay, so let me press browse for a second again. So let's pretend you were on your temp drive and then you worked your way to the folder where you want to put everything. And like I mentioned in the previous demo uh, lecture, I've made a folder called Lecture Demos. And inside of there is where I'm going to put everything I do in this course. Okay, Whether you load down the material that I've given you or you're saving your own stuff, we're going to put it into that particular folder. And then I'm going to press Select Folder. And what you'll see down here is that it now says every time you save something, it'll always be in the Lecture Demo. Okay, I think we're ready uh, to press OK. All right, and you give it a couple of seconds, and what it's going to do is it's going to show you a blank screen, so to speak. We call that the form, and you're going to have tools on the left-hand side and some other material over on the right, which I'll explain to you in a second. So actually, let's, let's take a look around the screen and make sure we acquaint ourselves with all the different parts. So uh, the main screen where you're going to put all your... Uh, controls, buttons, pictures, whatever you want to put here. Okay, we call that the form, okay, or the user design form. Okay, on the left hand side here, where you're going to drag things like uh, boxes and pictures and things like that, we call that the toolbox. All right, that's where all your tools are. And there's actually a lot more tools than you see there. And later on, as we get more sophisticated in the course, I'll show you how to import more tools into that toolbox. On the right-hand side is what we call the uh, 
file explorer solution explorer okay and what that does is show you some of the bits and pieces not all of them but some of the bits and pieces that make up your actual application okay so uh, there's the form there's the starter application and you notice these two have the, the ending dot cs which stands for c sharp okay uh, and there's other things up here which we'll talk about as we go along the last important part of your screen is the property settings and again you won't know what these mean or do until I show you our actual program that we're going to work on today but these are your properties okay so those are the main four parts of the screen and we're going to use them today to create our first computer program okay so how do you create a program what are the steps well what I like to do and I like to do this all the time is first thing I like to do is give everything meaningful names so over here where it says form one that doesn't mean anything to me so I'm going to rename it and I'm gonna call it and I'm gonna always be kind of a uh, following some rules so forms are always gonna start with FRM and then you can name them whatever you want so this is our first app so I'm gonna call it form first app and don't rub out the dot CS that's really important if you do that you're gonna mess up the program now I'll click away the computer will give me a, a little brief warning and then I'll press yes and now what we've done is change the name of the form to form first app now let's click on the form itself this title is not that good I don't like that I like to have something more you know uh, illustrative of what we're going to do in the particular example so now we got to go down here to these things called properties and there's all these different settings that you can change actually we've changed one sort of indirectly by changing the name of the form and here it is right there we're going to slide down to a property called text so this is alphabetical and notice how it says form one we're going to call this first app and when i click away from it now the title up here changes okay so now what i'm doing is i'm changing the properties of this form next let's go up here and there's a property called back color Let's see what that does. I'm going to pick custom and I'm going to pick sort of a light yellow. Okay, so there's another property I've changed. Now I've changed the back color of the form. And there's some other things that you can do. You can have it so that the form, when it starts up, goes right in the middle of the screen. So there's something called startup position and we can make it go center screen. All right, and you can fool around some more later on with those properties. You can't wreck anything. Sometimes it won't look as good as what it was before, but you can change it back to something else. All right, so now I'm pretty happy with that. Then what I do is, and I always get nervous about this when I'm doing something big and important, do a, a save, but not just a save, do a save all, because as we get more complicated in these programs, there's gonna be more than one screen there might be multiple screens so this is the safest way to save everything so I'll do a save all all right I'm just happy that every time I do something important I save in bits and pieces just in case something happens the computer crashes or whatever the power goes out okay now let's get used to using some of these controls here there's several hundred of them uh, we're only going to use maybe a half dozen to a dozen but uh, let's start off and use the most basic one it's called a label control so I'm gonna press it once then I'm going to move over to the screen and I'm going to make a big rectangle and labels are used for titles okay and again we're going to follow some rules so now that the label is highlighted clicked on it with that little dot I'm going to go over to properties and all labels are always going to start off with LBL like that and I'm going to call this one label title now that didn't change anything there all that did was name that control that little object there so what I'm going to do now is slide down to text like I showed you a few minutes ago. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this um, welcome to my program. All right, so that'll be the title right there. Now, there's other kinds of things you can do to this title. You can change the font size. You can change the color of it. There's the font right there, actually. And if you don't like that font, when you press on that, it'll pop up and you can change it to a different style font. You can make it bold. You can change the size of it and then you press OK. And now it's a different size and a different look. Next control I want to show you is the text box. Used quite a bit. And we're going to press it here. 
and we're gonna make a little rectangle here. The text box is used when a user has to type in information. Now in this example, I'm just putting it up here. We're not gonna actually use the information the person types in there. We'll do that in a later example, but I wanted to illustrate what a text box looks like. And again, let's make sure we follow the same technique every single time. We're gonna name our text boxes always as TXT. And then I'm just gonna say uh, user name here. So I'm gonna ask the person who's using it to type in their name there, okay? So you don't use any text in this one. Now, I guess if you did put some text in there, uh, you could say this is like the default. If you wanted to put that in there, let's see what happens when I do that. There's a word default there, okay? If you don't want that there, you can leave it out. But that's a text box. We'll use that in a second. The most fun is when you start putting images and pictures on your screen. So how do you put a picture on your screen to make it look, you know, nice? Well, there's a thing called picture boxes, a control. We're going to press it. We're going to make a decent size rectangle there, and that's where our picture is going to go. Now, same technique. Make sure you understand this. And when I've taught this over the years, some students say, sir, come on, please. I don't like doing this part. But yes, you have to name all your objects because later on, as we get more sophisticated, we're going to refer to those objects and they have to have a set name that makes sense. So picture um, title, we'll call it pick title. OK, and then we're going to click away for it for a second. Now here's a common mistake students do. I'm not finished this yet. I actually haven't put a picture in yet. But by accidentally clicking away from it, when I go over here, you're going, what? Well, where is the stuff for the picture stuff? Well, you are looking now at the form. What if you pressed here? You'd be looking at the labeled title. If you pressed here, you'd be looking at text. So make sure you know that you're supposed to be on this when you're going to change properties associated with that. So the most important property we need to change right now is we need to load in an image. So there's an image property. And right now it says there's no image. Yeah, that's true. We're going to press the three dots. And we're going to pick something from our local hard drive. And we're going to press import. Now, you've got to find something on your computer that's an image. I happen to know I have some images stored on this machine. I'm going to go to a folder called images. And I'm just going to double click on this one. And then I'm going to press OK. Now, don't freak out, sir. You loaded in the picture, where is it? Well, the picture is so big relative to that little itsy bitsy box that we need to sort of scale it down. So there's another property. We'll slide down here to size, mode, and we'll put it on stretch. And there's our image. Okay, let's finish up with uh, buttons. Now I'm gonna put two buttons on the screen. One's gonna do something like say hello to you, and the other one's going to exit out of the program. OK, so there's a button. We're going to throw one there. And we'll throw another one there. And again, let's be consistent. Buttons. So this first one here is going to be my welcome button. So buttons I'm always going to call uh, BTN. And I'm going to call this one welcome. Now, it doesn't actually say welcome when you do that. So you got to slide down to text. And where it says text, we're going to write down um, Welcome. That's the first button. The second button is going to be my exit button. So that one I'm going to call BTN exit. And again, that word's not going to show up on the button. So you're going to slide down to text. And where it says button two, I'm going to type in exit. Okay. Now, properties for buttons, you can also change the look of them, the background color, and things like that. For now, we're going to leave them alone. And I'm going to do a save. I haven't done a save in a while. And I'm going to run it. And let's see what it does. OK, give it a few seconds to compile. This is the first time that the program's run. There it is in the middle of the screen, because we have a property called center screen. Beautiful. There's the word default. I'm going to type in my name there instead. These buttons don't do anything, though. OK, but this is a real first computer program. It's got a nice title. It's got a little box there for information. It's got a little graphic and a couple of buttons. OK. Now, let's put some intelligence to this program. Let's make it think and then when react, okay? Now, when you react to something, that's called an event. And one of the first events we're gonna look at today is called the click event. So I'm going to double click on the welcome button and I'm gonna go into the underground. Now here, you gotta be careful, okay? Don't, draw, don't go driving around anywhere else. You landed right here, stay there and start typing there. Don't decide to type in here. Don't decide to type up here because it won't work. 
all right so wherever it puts you stay there and start typing and I'm going to teach you a couple of words now these are special computer words C sharp words the one we're going to do right now is called message box dot okay and what follows is one of the special things that belong to the message box command and the one that we're going to use is called show but then you need a bracket what we're going to put in there is the word welcome and here's the thing that's going to drive you crazy in this entire course each c sharp command needs to finish up with a semicolon if you don't put the semicolon in, it's going to be a mistake now you're in the underground so to speak how do you get back up to the top well here you go up here and you're back up to the top and you can do a save again always be consistent and then we press start to run the program there's our program again you can type in your name in there again and this time when i press welcome look at that that is called a message box and it's got the word welcome on it and press ok to stop it okay let's finish up and program this exit button and again how do you get to code it because we have to go into the underground into the code so you double click and this event that we're doing is called the click event and i probably didn't focus on it enough in my first example but notice how it has the word click there click so we're using the button click event there's other events there's a button mouse over and there's other ones I'm going to teach you this semester but right now we're focusing on the click event and again don't go walking around crazy stay where the computer puts you and the way that you tell the computer to exit out of this program this is one of the ways there's several ways this is the first way I'm going to show you is you say the word this dot close and it'll close the program and again let's go back up to the top into the screen do a little save all okay try to get into good habits press run there's our screen again type in whatever you want uh, you can say welcome again that's still working you can press exit and it exits out of the program now if you've been following along and you got everything to work congratulations but even myself things go wrong things don't always work out so let me give you a couple of for instances that might have happened while you were doing uh, this little example program. Let's double click in here. This is the most common thing that can go wrong. The infamous, you forgot the semicolon. Okay, so let's pretend you forgot it, you pressed start to run it, and you get this message. Okay, don't freak out. Here's an error. Now, what it'll do is it'll say, would you like to continue and run from the last successful build, which means, I know you screwed up here, but uh, you want to go back to the one that worked and run it? No, I don't want to do that because I made a mistake. Let's see how we fix it. So press no. Now, sometimes it'll be nice enough and highlight the general area where your error is. In this case, it does. And then you fix it. And then you press start. And it works. Okay. So we're going to talk more about what is called debugging as we get more sophisticated in the program. But that's basically what you should do if that happens. Another thing I've seen students do over the years is accidentally make things disappear. And I'll show you what I mean. Somehow they accidentally come over here and then, oh, it's gone. And you go, oh, sir, where's the where's my properties? I'm trying to set properties. If that ever happens to you, don't worry about it. Go up to view. And these are all the little things that you can add on to your thing. Now, I'm looking for properties, properties. Where are you? Properties. Do you see property somewhere? There it is. Properties window. Bang. It comes back there. Okay. So if you ever lose one of these screens, chances are you can go here and find it out. There's Solution Explorer if you lose this little thing here. Okay. There's Toolbox if you lose Toolbox. So hopefully if you've gotten little errors, you'll be able to react to them and fix them up. So there you go. There's your first little program. And what you should do now is create one similar to this, but do it yourself. Put your own little graphics on it, different background screen, maybe make up a little different message here instead of welcome. Do what you want so you start to feel comfortable using C Sharp. So if you got this to work out, great going. If you didn't, don't worry about it. Keep plugging away. While we're showing other little details about C Sharp, why don't we take a look at the right-hand side and investigate a few of those little screen uh, uh, files and see exactly what they do. So as you know, form, that's this thing right here that we're talking about. But what are these things right here? Okay, I want to show you what they are. What makes C Sharp and the Visual Studio environment so neat for beginning programmers is that it makes the interface, the, the designing of the screen, so easy for you. Now, behind your back, the computer is doing some dirty work. And I want to show you a little bit of what's going on behind your back. See this thing called First uh, App Designer? I'm going to double click on it for a sec. And right here 
This is what the computer is doing behind your back. It's writing the special commands that place those controls like the label, like the text box, like the picture box, like the buttons on the screen. So this is how it's being designed for you behind your back, okay? And we just see the pretty stuff, which is okay, especially when you're just learning. In other languages, sometimes like Java, they may force you to type in some of these commands. Another command that you might be wondering about is this one right here. Whenever you load images into your uh, project, and not just one, but seven or eight of them, they are stored in this resources uh, file. Okay, so if I was to click on this, what I had seven or eight pictures, it would show all seven or eight pictures, and they get all sort of compressed and put into one file. It's kind of a nice, neat little package. The last thing I want to show you is this program right here, which you don't really touch, but what it does, it's got a, a line here that kickstarts your whole program to tell the computer, listen, once you get past me, now go to the uh, form called uh, First App and make it appear and start the program. Okay, so there's all these little uh, files and we'll talk more about other ones. Like we're going to talk about references in a couple of days and things like that. But those are all these little files and what they mean. Uh, just so you get a, a basic idea of what's going on behind your back. It's not magic. It all makes sense. And I wanted to show you some of the background information that you would use. Okay, time for our next application. We're gonna learn how to use radio buttons. Okay, so they're kind of neat. I wanna give you an example of how they work and how we're gonna use them in a practical application. So let's first of all uh, close the solution and then we'll go File, New Project. We're always gonna pick Windows Form. This one here we're gonna call Radio Buttons. Radio Buttons. All right, and we're gonna press OK. And we'll get started. Now I'm going to do a bit of doodling on the screen for a few seconds and then we'll actually make the, the application. But let me start off and uh, just give you the theory behind this. What we're going to do is we're going to have these little circles, which we call radio buttons. Okay, and when we click on one of them, we want something to happen. What we're going to do is do something really simple. We're going to make like a happy face appear. And if we press this one, we're going to make a sad face appear. And then maybe these two make a picture of uh, rain coming down from clouds. And maybe this one has lightning bolt or something. Okay. Now, you notice that these two are totally separate events. So what we're going to have to get used to is we're going to have to put these radio buttons into their own separate groups. Because the way a radio button works, when you press one of them, it unpresses the other one. Okay, which is good between these two. And when you press one of them, it unpresses the other one. But if we did not use these little groups around the radio buttons, when you press this one down, it would undo all three of these. So by putting them into groups, you separate them. So now let me, again, not doodling, but again with this idea, let me show you what I mean. So we're a radio button. So this is alphabetical, I hope on your computer too. So you press a radio button, we'll put a little one there. I'm going to grab about four of them just to give you an idea. Now, we're not programming yet, and you don't have to do this part with me yet. Just watch me. So we're going to put four radio buttons here, and we're going to start running it right away. All right, we'll drag this right here. Now, here's the way a radio button works. When you press one down, it unpresses the other one, unpresses the other one, unpresses the other one. But if we wanted these to be two separate things, what we did here was wrong. So let me rub these out for a sec. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, pick the radio buttons, but before we do that, we're gonna do this thing called a group box. There is a group box right there. So we're gonna make a big group box there, and we're gonna make another one right here. And now we're gonna put radio buttons inside of those. Okay, so I'll put one there, do another one, Okay, so they're in sort of like their own little world now. We do the same thing right here. Radio button and one more. And now we're going to run it. Now notice what happens this time. As I press these, nothing's going on here. They're in their own little world. So these two are going back and forth. These two are going back and forth. So now we're basically done the prep. 
All right, so again, we're going to delete all this and we're going to delete all this. Okay, and now we're ready to program. Now, you have a fresh screen. I don't. I've wrecked mine. So I'm going to uh, close this out and start fresh. You don't have to. Okay, I'm going to start fresh, new project, and uh, we're going to start off. We'll call this uh, new radio buttons. You keep yours the new way you named it. Okay, so we got a fresh screen. We're ready to go. Okay, let's remain very disciplined. Do it the same way every single time. So the first thing I'm going to do before I get rolling is I'm going to go over here to the form. I'm going to rename it, and all forms should be called FRM. I'm going to call this radio. And then I'm going to click away, and I get a little message. I always say yes. Okay. Next, I don't like that title. Okay, pick something a bit more. So we're going to call this radio button example. Okay, I'm not going to change the screen color this time. I'm just going to leave it like that. But those two are ready, and then I always press uh, save all just in case. I always get a little nervous. Okay, and now let's uh, add some radio buttons. And actually, we're going to stop for a sec. I'm going to drop this screen down, and I want you to make sure, as you should always, you should have downloaded this right here, right? User interface and unzipped it by. Uh, right clicking on it and zipping it with WinRAR. Now when you go inside of here, we're going to need this folder in a few minutes. This has pictures, okay? Not that great of pictures, it doesn't matter. We're going to go specifically in this one in a, in a few minutes and we're going to take these images and use them in our program. So as you see me go through and grab images, you're going, where do you get those from? They're in the resources for today's lecture and once you unzip it, you should see that there. Okay, so if you're wondering where's he going from, it's because of those images in the icon folder. All right, so let me pop back up uh, Visual Studio and let's get rolling. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this a simple one in this example. We're going to use the group box, even though I'm only, only going to have one section, but it's still proper to use the group box. I'm going to make a, a decent size section right there. Next, we always go over and uh, name whatever we're working on. So we're going to call this group boss GRP and then we'll call it mood and you can also go and change the text box on it too so we're going to say moods and so there'll be the word moods there okay now we're going to go and grab two radio buttons all right and we're going to name these two in a second so there's the first radio button and a second one okay so this radio button right here we're going to call it and again new naming convention rdo and we're going to call this happy and we're going to actually type in the word happy there okay and then this one right here we're going to call rdo sad and we're going to type in the word sad there okay next we're going to add to image Okay, two images are going to be picture boxes, so we're going to grab two picture boxes, put a picture box right about there, and another one just below it. This picture box, remember, always be consistent, so we're going to call it pick happy. Okay, and we'll get the picture in a second, and let's call this one pick sad. Okay, now this pick happy. We're gonna do a bit of digging, all right? So this is where you, you might get lost a little bit. So you gotta make sure you remember where you downloaded those images for today's lecture and we're gonna go looking for them. So um, I'm gonna move up a little bit. Okay, so remember this is lecture demos, user interface, icons. I'm going into the miscellaneous and you're gonna go, where's the pictures? So what you gotta do here, because I'm using some kind of weird image format called the ICO format, I'm going to press star dot star, press enter, and now they'll, they'll appear. They're there, but they just wouldn't get picked up by this. So I'm going to pick uh, this one for the happy, and then I'm going to press OK. Remember, you got to stretch that because it didn't come in uh, the size of the picture box. So I'll go stretch image, and that's good enough size. OK, this one here is going to be our sad. Same technique. Now, I might get lucky because it might remember now where I was. 
and when I go to local resource, OK. And we'll go down and pick a sad face. And again, we'll stretch it. OK, so those are our two images. So what does that look like when you run right now? Goes back and forth, but the two pictures are still there. So I want it when I press happy to have the happy face, when I press sad to have the sad face. So that's what we got to do next, and that's computer programming. And actually, before I computer program, let me go over here again to the form, and I want it to start sort of in the center. It's popping up over on the left-hand side of the screen when we run this. Okay, so let's see what that looks like now. So now it starts in the middle. Very good. Okay, let's do this in stages. So first of all, when I press run, I don't want those two images to appear. I want them to be invisible, and then I'll make them appear by pressing one of those two radio buttons. So there's a property for the images. I'm going to press the first image. I'm going to slide down to the word that says visible, true, and I'm going to make it false. Okay, then I'm going to slide down to that one, and I'm going to slide down to visible true again and make it false. Okay, so now let's run it again. And now you notice they're not there. And when I press these, they're not showing up. So it's crunch time. We got to actually do some computer programming now. So let's go into the underground, the code, and make these appear or re or disappear depending on what we press. So let's double click on happy. And what we're going to basically tell the computer is, listen, when I click on you, picture happy dot visible should be equal to true. Semicolon. OK. And you got to think about this. You press that one to make it appear. Then if you were on the sad one, you have to make that disappear. So there's always a little bit more thought process than you think when you're doing these. So we're going to tell the computer to make it invisible. OK, and um, we're not done. We've got to do basically the exact reverse for this one. And actually, I'm going to get a little bit lazy and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in here. But this one is the exact reverse, right? So and this one, you're trying to make the sad face appear. So this is false. And this one becomes true. OK, and I'm getting a little bit nervous, so I'm going to do a save all. I'm going to go back into the design window and let's uh, try it out. OK, so uh, there's a little setting that's a bit more advanced that I haven't shown you. That's why nothing's appearing yet. But let me press sad and let me press happy. Uh oh. What did I do wrong? All right, let's press happy for a second. So pick happy visible. Oh, pick happy again. No, no, no. The second one is called pick sad. And this one here is called pick sad. OK, and that's why it's really important to name your things. So I know at the beginning students say, sir, why do you name all these things? But now, as you saw through that error I made, if you don't remember what you called them, you're not going to get the re results. So there's pick sad and there's pick happy. OK, let's try this again. So this time, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad, happy. OK, before we wrap up today's lesson, what I want to do is mention one other thing that was in the lecture material today. You see me calling forms FRM and picture boxes PIC and radio buttons RDO. So did you just make those up? Well, these are pretty well standard rules that a lot of programmers use. And in your uh, downloads for today is this particular PDF document, which has suggested prefixes when naming C-sharp objects. So I'm not saying you absolutely have to use these, but it's just like nice convention to follow. And here are some of the things that we've done or are going to do, like button already we've done. So BTN and form is FRM and a group box is GRP. So you've got a nice little uh, summary of some of the more common ones that we're going to use in this course. 
uh, and so you can use them in that format. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that to wrap up. So hopefully you uh, got this to work and there's other things that you can do. Dream up other things that you want to do. Maybe have two separate ones. So, you know, I, I did mention that, you know, you've got these things called groups. So why not make another separate group totally unrelated to this one to maybe make other objects appear and disappear when you press on the radio buttons, okay, as your little uh, practice for today. Okay, thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next uh, lesson.